Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Shastogi. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, today in this particular lecture, we are going to discuss a different types of communication system that is an introduction to spread spectrum communication. These are the outlines. We will start up with the introduction. Then we will going to discuss what is spread spectrum, which will be followed by the general model description of spread spectrum systems. Then we will going to discuss in brief about pseudo random numbers. And then finally we will going to conclude by discussing some of the characteristics of our spread spectrum signals. So in the communication system we have discussed so far, our aim is to minimize the amount of bandwidth consumed by the modulated signal during the transmission. Till the time we have discussed our narrowband communication system where our emphasis is to minimize the amount of bandwidth required to transmit any signal. So here the focus is on to achieve the high spectral efficiency so that we could conserve the bandwidth resource since it is very scarce resource we have to focus over the conserving the resources. So this narrowband communication system is mainly have two major drawbacks. Number one is interception by unintended users and second one is more susceptible towards the jamming. By interception with the unintended users, we mean that there are certain users who are not supposed to hear the conversation between two parties, but intentionally they will going to intercept and fetch the information that they are not supposed to hear. And second one is they are more susceptible towards the jamming. By jamming, we mean that the people should not in a state to conversate or communicate or we could say that that their communication system will become unoperational. So this jamming would have been performed with the help of jammers where we are generating the narrow band signal but in opposite phases. So due to destructive interference at the receiving side receiver will not in a state to extract the information signal properly and its communication effects so it is not in a state to conversate. So how we can do that? One of the possible solution is spread spectrum. So what is spread spectrum and how we can do it? We're going to discuss. So spread spectrum was initially developed for the military and intelligence requirements. So the use of spread spectrum makes jamming and interception more difficult and provides the improved receptions. How it will going to do that? We will going to discuss in the coming slides. But these are the specific features of spread spectrum communication systems that the spread spectrum signals are more immune towards damming and to intercept those signals are quite difficult. So as we had already see that it was mainly developed for military and intelligence requirement so that the communication systems owned by the military and the intelligence will not get affected by any mean. And since their information is very crucial, so it should also not intercept by unintended users. So the basic idea is to expand each user signals to occupy a much broader spectrum than the necessary one. So I mean we will going to expand or increase or enhance the individual narrowband users to a much wider spectrum or bandwidth. This is actually being called the spreading of the signal. So for fixed transmission power, I mean if the transmission power value is fixed, the broader spectrum means both the lowering the signal power and higher the spectral redundancy. What do we mean by higher spectral redundancy? Means since we are expanding our signal, so it will going to take up a larger amount of bandwidth. So we have much redundancy in terms of bandwidth. So this particular figure shows the spread spectrum signal versus narrow band signal. So this blue color figure shows the narrow band signal or we could say that the baseband signal which is having high peak over here and it is having a very narrow band of bandwidth. Its bandwidth lying in this region only. So this is the bandwidth of our narrow band signal. So what we are actually doing in our spread spectrum signal is we are actually trying to spread this frequency from here to here and from here to here. So this spectrum is much wider in comparison to this narrow band 
frequency band requirement so since we are expanding or increasing the bandwidth of our signal so power spectral density will also get reduced as we know that the relationship between the power and the power spectral density power is nothing but it is the integration of power spectral density over the range of frequencies so if frequency range are increasing power spectral density also get reduced so for the same power requirement we could say that the transmission signal power will also get re reduced in spread spectrum in comparison to our baseband signal communication so this is actually showing our spread spectrum signal this orange color is actually showing the spread spectrum signal where the bandwidth requirement is much larger in comparison to this baseband signal so what do you mean by spread spectrum so spread spectrum modulation basically spreads the spectrum of the transmitted signal into the wider range of bandwidth or we could say that into the wider range of frequencies so how we can do that how we going to increase the narrow band signal into the wide band signal or how we're going to expand the bandwidth of our narrow band signal so with the help of spreading code we are actually enhancing or increasing the spectrum of our transmitted signal or we could say that a narrow band signal so this particular figure shows how spreading would have been done obviously spreading would have been done with the help of certain spreading process with the help of this spreading code so initially we'll be having a narrow band signal whose bandwidth is b and after this spreading process we'll be having a spread spectrum signal whose bandwidth is quite increased as we have seen from this figure that this bandwidth requirement is much wider or much larger in comparison to this narrow band signal so this is what we'll going to do in our spread spectrum so after this is spreading process we will get this spread spectrum signal which is having much larger bandwidth in comparison to our narrow band signal so it is spread spectrum is an important form of encoding for wireless communication it is used to transmit either the analog or digital data but using an analog signal since digital signals cannot be passed through the open air so anyhow we must have to convert into such form so that they could get easily transported through the free space so two approaches have been used in spread spectrum modulation number one is frequency hopping and second one is direct sequence spread spectrum so in frequency hopping we will going to change our carrier frequency periodically so after complete encoding process our actual signal will going to contain a much wider or larger bandwidth in comparison to the original sequence whereas in the direct sequence spread spectrum the spreading would have been performed with the help of certain code words or sequences so we'll going to discuss these two processes in much greater detail in our upcoming lectures but before that we have to discuss about the general model of spread spectrum signal so this particular figure shows the general model of spread spectrum signal initially we will be having input data which will be passed through the channel encoder which will going to make our signal immune towards the noise we had already know that when our signal is passed through the channel noise will get added up and it will going to corrupt our bits so what our channel encoder will going to do is it will going to incorporate certain error correction and detection codes so that our signal will become immune towards the channel effect then we're going to pass it through the modulator which is getting a uh, input from the pseudo noise sequence generator as a spreading code with so with the help of this spreading code this modulator will going to modulate our signal and then it will get passed through the channel and at the receiving side we'll be having a demodulator corresponding to this modulator which will again going to have second input as the spreading code which was generated by pseudo random noise generator this demodulator will going to despread our signal and then it will get passed through the channel decoder and finally we will going to have our input data that we have transmitted from our transmitting side so this is nothing but this is our transmitter and this is our receiver and to connect between transmitter and receiver we will be having some physical medium we could say that channel so this is the general model of our spread spectrum signal now we're going to discuss this model in much greater detail so the input is fed in into the channel encoder we had already discussed what what is the role of channel encoder it will going to add certain error correction detection mechanism to our incoming seek bit sequences so that we can rectify the errors at the receiving side 
so it produces the analog signal with narrow bandwidth so this is what our channel encoder will going to do and then in order to generate our spread spectrum signal we need to pass it through a spreader or we could say that second modulator so the signal is further modulated using this sequence of digits that is the spreading code or spreading sequence which are generated by pseudo random noise or pseudo random number generator so we had already discussed that in order to increase or enhance our signal bandwidth a uh, spreading sequence would have been used which would have been generated by pseudo random noise generator so what is that it is one of the most important part of our spread spectrum system so what is this pseudo random number and what is pseudo random number generator what are its various properties there are so many things that needs to be discussed separately that we'll going to discuss in our upcoming lectures but as of now you just only need to understand that pseudo random noise sequence is a random number sequence with the help of this random number sequence we are actually trying to spread our sequence so that we could expand or increase our baseband signal bandwidth so the effect of modulation is to increase the bandwidth of the signal that has to be transmitted that we had already discussed so on the receiving side the same digital sequence or the pn sequence would have been used in order to demodulate or we could say that to de spread our spread spectrum signal then signal is fed to the channel decoder which has to perform the reverse operation as we did at the transmitting side in order to recover the data that would have been generated by the information source so here is the brief description about pseudo random number obviously we have said that there are so many things that we need to study about pseudo random numbers that uh, how pseudo random numbers are generated what are the various properties of pn sequence numbers that we will going to study separately in our next lecture but here we will try to give an abstract idea about the pseudo random numbers so pseudo random numbers are uh, a random number which are actually generated by the deterministic algorithms obviously in a broader sense we could say that they are random number but they would have been generated with the help of deterministic algorithms so actually they are not random but when the sequences would have been generated then they could certainly pass reasonable tests of randomness so we could say that in general they are certain random numbers so they can be start from an initial seed or we could say that from certain initial codes so they would have been generated with the help of certain initial code so obviously if they would have been generated with the help of certain initial value or code one have to know those initial code or values or seed as well as the algorithms in order to predict the sequence so if one is having the knowledge of algorithm but it doesn't have the initial seed or we could say that the initial code then obviously it will not in a state to predict the sequence so in that essence we could say that if a person doesn't know the specific code would be like completely random to it and it will not in a state to recover the information signal so hence only the receiver which is actually having the exact idea about initial seed or the code can only decode that particular signal so in order to recover or receive any signal the receiver must have the knowledge of algorithm as well as it must have the initial seed or the code sequence then only it will be in a state to recover the signal else it will not so what are the various characteristics of spread spectrum signals first of all they are difficult to intercept they are easily hidden they are resistant to jamming then they provide the immunity to distortion due to the multipath propagation effect they also have asynchronous multiple access capability so they are difficult to intercept what do you mean by that since their spectrum is much wider and narrow band receivers are focusing only the narrow bandwidth of our signal so they will not in a state to insert intercept the complete information they will only get certain small amount of information so that is why we could say that spread spectrum signals are difficult to intercepts they are easily hidden we had already discussed that for the same power requirement the power spectral density of our signal will be very much reduced and they are actually being passing through a noise like signal so they could get easily hidden as they are passing like a noise like signal
they are also resistant to jamming since jammer are working over a specific range of frequencies so it is quite difficult to have a jammer which can generate all the frequency ranges so we could say that they are quite resistant to the jamming too they also provide the immunity to the distortion due to the multipath propagation in wireless domain when we're going to pass certain signal from our transmitter and in order to receive at the receiver they have to follow certain signal propagation mechanisms such as reflection diffraction and scattering so all the signal components will not going to follow the same path so since they are coming from different path so obviously the time requirement in order to reach from transmitter to receiver that will also different one so at the receiving side when we will going to club them we will going to have the combination of multiple path component which will be having the same frequency but at different time so obviously current time signal value will get overlapped with the earlier time signal value so obviously they will going to interfere with each other and will going to get certain distorted signal so this is actually being called as multi path propagation effect so spread spectrum system will also provide certain immunity to the distortions due to multi path propagation so obviously we will be exploiting some time diversity in the rake receiver in order to avoid this multi path propagation effect so as of now we could only say that the spread spectrum signal should provide immunity to the distortions that is happening due to the multi path propagation they also have the asynchronous multiple access capability what do you mean by asynchronous multiple access capability different people with the different application will going to access with different data rate whereas in synchronous multiple access techniques all the users same time slot would have been provided irrespective of the fact that whatever their needs are whether they require higher or lower they all will going to have the same access of the resources but whereas in the asynchronous multiple access we can provide different resource access to different people depending upon their requirement so these are the references thank you very much for your patient hearing